today's video, we are in our E92 M3 and we're gonna be installing a brand new head unit. We're replacing this old CCC um, pre-LCI iDrive head unit and replacing it with this Xtron 8.8 .8 inch head unit, which also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And this video will also pretty much work for if you have an E60 or pretty much any E90X platform. The install is pretty much the same if you do have the pre-LCI CCC iDrive system. If you do have the newer CIC iDrive system, this exact head unit will not work for you, but the install process should be very similar. Now, if you do want to know where to buy this, I will have the link in the description, but let's go ahead and jump right into this install. Now, the first step is to actually remove this trim that goes across the whole panel. You do have two wires that connect to these controls and one wire right here for your actual start stop button. Now, I do will say you can do this with your hands, but a trim tool is recommended, but you can literally just pull this typical little gap right here you can pull right here be very careful and you can see this panel is actually very loose it's pretty easy to take out one of the easiest panels to take out in the car slowly come across the whole entire panel now i did need to open the passenger door to actually get to this last clip right here to pull it from the side part it's really hard however once that's done you can actually go work on removing the wire so don't remove the trim all the way because you do have wires connected you can actually reach your hand underneath there by pulling this up and you want to go ahead and pull this center part through it can actually push through just like that there we go pull it out and then you have two wires connecting it from the back like this and these two a little hard to do it one hand here but these two simply come right out now the power stop start button this also has a wire right here you want to definitely be extremely gentle this is really hard to film because it's kind of behind it but this one also just slips right out again i'm kind of struggling trying to show you this but there we go and it's out and as you can see once i pull the whole trim out all three wires are removed you can see it connects to the back part like that and yeah that just pulls right out that's the first step the next step is the climate controls as you can see there's some space right here for your fingers just simply push right through here on each side this clips right out you have wires on the back right here make sure you pull this one out first on the right there we go followed by these two clips these work pretty simple you have a little part you can push right here if you look really closely you push that in and then while you're pushing that in you pull this gray part over it that's how those works and it works the same for this one too again this is really hard to film because it is honestly a two-handed job but as you can see, push down on that center part, pull the gray part over, and there we go. Next, we're gonna take our trusty trim removal tool, come up on the side right here, and actually pull this lower panel out. There we go. I'm gonna get it out a little bit. And then we can use our hands actually pry off the rest now be careful this wire is kind of tangled up right here it's kind of weird how they did this how they pinned it in the plastic but just take that out on the side and there we go another piece removed next we're going to use this t10 bit to take these two screws at the top that actually hold in the screen you just take both of those out now once both screws are removed you can take your trim tool and you want to actually go from the top right here and kind of move it down and then out got to wiggle it a little bit there we go and then you do have wires on the back the first wire is for the screen on the side right here you want to go ahead and just pull this outward it's a little metal wire there we go comes right out no squeezing or pulling go ahead and remove it out of these um clips up top then lastly you have the same style wire that we have for the ac vents down and push it across next we have four phillips head screws two on each side right here near the bottom two right there and two right here and these just simply come right out 
Once all four screws are removed, this trim can come out. Now, if you do have the automatic, you do have to remove the shifter. Now, I am really hoping since we have the manual, maybe if I put it down over in six, we should have enough space. There we go. Definitely don't want to scratch anything with this and we can get it over the shift. Now, when removing that bottom portion of the head unit, it's impossible to record and actually show you how I was able to remove all these. You have to remove all of these from the back once you pull it slightly out, but it is possible. Um, all these just pretty much plug right out. This metal one takes a lot of force. Now for this one here, you wanna, this actually to pull on this tab on the back right here, squeeze this and then pull it downwards. And that's how you pull this big plug out. That's kind of the best way I can show you guys. Now we can actually start working with the wiring harness that we have. So the first part is actually taking the optical cable. It is this one right here, this green and black one, there's a little tab at the bottom. You squeeze that in, pull that out, and that will go in the slot on our wiring harness right over, focus. We'll go in this slot right here. So next, you actually want to take the old part of the wiring harness and connect it to the new part, these two boxes, snap together, and then you pull this black part over the top, and now it's connected. Now for this part of the wiring harness, this has to actually connect to the back of the screen right here. So because of that, we're gonna have to wire it through all the way up in between these vents right here. Should come out right here, slide it back up through here, and it's gonna come out right here to connect to the screen. So yeah, we're gonna snake it. There's a small little gap. Now go ahead and connect your two small wiring harnesses to the back right here, and your antenna plugs into the blue part all on the back of the new display. Now, this set of cables seems like it's more for if you wanna have more of a, um, a DVR setup, while this is actually just for your USB for USB outputs. And then your main actual one right here, that plugs in right up in at the top. Here's a better look at that part of the wire harness I snaked up to the top. So as you can see, the bottom part here, I went around this bracket through the back of here, this little hole right here, to use your fingers, grab it from there. Next, you wanna actually go behind this. There's actually a pretty reasonable size gap right here. I pulled it through there and then you can pull it out right there. It takes a little bit of finger and gymnastics, but if you're really good with your fingers, it's not hard to do. Once you have all those wires hooked up to the back, I went ahead and tucked all the wires and I have this going like this. It's not all the way put in. Now we're gonna actually test if everything works. But before we can do that, we actually gonna plug everything back into the bottom part of the head unit. It's just pretty much um, put back in what you took out at the beginning. However, you're using the new part of the harness right here to plug in at the top part right here. Now, when you're putting your actual um, head unit back in, I do recommend putting down some microfiber tiles or really anything to protect your interior. Um, this leather can really get damaged by these extremely sharp metal corners. You can also do this when you were taking it out too, but for me taking it out was pretty easy. However, putting it back in, I really don't want to scratch anything. So I have everything covered up. Let's go ahead and get one over the shift knob tube, and then we can go ahead and install it. You want to take this metal wire from the top that was plugged into the old screen and plug it in right here. Give it a good push and make sure it doesn't come out. Now, when it comes to wiring up the back of your new head unit, you want to go ahead and plug this metal wire in. This was previously plugged into your old screen. Then you want to actually plug in these three different um, cords right here. Two go at the bottom, two wiring harnesses go at the bottom, the big one at the top. That one we snake through here goes in the top. This one is for your video in and output if you want to run like actual video and also for your camera if you do have that setup. And this is for the USBs. So for these, if you do want to use wired Apple CarPlay or want to use like a... Um, a thumb drive or something, you can't snake these back down. I can stick it out like maybe like right here if you do wanna do wired. Now, when it comes to this, this is your um, Wi-Fi antenna. This gets plugged in right here. And then your GPS antenna with the blue gets pushed in right down here. Make sure this is in securely. And that is the wiring setup for the back of the head unit. Now, when it comes to actually making the audio work, when you get the wire harness, you will have these two wires connected in right here. You need to take that out, take your actual aux cord that comes with it, plug it into this wire harness, and then that will actually plug in right here. 
right here into your actual aux. Now, people have found much better ways to actually properly wire this up, but that's kind of the getaway to do it. Some people have actually split the wires and actually connected it in properly. I might pull this out and snake it in through here, but for right now, that is the ghetto setup we have for the wire harness. But anyway, once that's done, you wanna go ahead and make sure everything actually works. When everything's connected, make sure the audio works, make a phone call, make sure your chime works. Once everything's working, then you just simply button everything back up. All right, guys, I've had this head unit in my car for about a week now, and there are some definite pros to this head unit and also some major cons, some almost a deal breaker for me, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. So starting with the pros, first off, everything works extremely well. Um, connecting your phone when you start the car up, it happens seamlessly. Within a couple seconds, everything pairs right together with no issues whatsoever at all. Now, the display quality here is also amazing. I have a head unit in my E9320i. It's a non-iDrive, so the head unit gets kind of installed more down here in this area. And the quality is just, it's simply not as good. From different angles, you can see there's no color shifting at all. Definitely a nice wide um, color arrangement. Everything looks really, really good. High pixel density, you can't even really see a pixel. When you open up the maps, everything looks very clear and very, very good. Um, there's little to no lag. I have seen lag sometimes, but for the most part, everything works pretty flawlessly. And the startup, again, doesn't take too long from turning it off. If I go ahead and turn on the head unit, um, it turns on pretty much instantaneously. Now, I did set up a rear camera. However, if your car does come at parking sensors, as you can see here, if I go ahead and actually throw the car into reverse, you can see my parking sensors come up and everything works perfectly fine. So you do get to keep those. Um, but as I said, all the functions of this work pretty well, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the major issues I have. Now, the first one I have here, first off, if you ever wanna go back to your regular iDrive system, you can. You just simply hold down the menu button a little bit longer, and you can see it is cropped in. Now, I did know about this issue already. I saw almost all the reviews on Amazon, they did mention this. I had to think how bad it would be because some people said it didn't happen to them, but just know a lot of people in the comment section um, and on the reviews really mentioned this has a serious cropping issue, which makes it really hard to use your old system. Now, if you barely ever use your old system in the first place, this won't be a real issue for you, but especially if I want to access something like my M controls, um, it is definitely a little bit harder to access on here considering everything is cropped in. Now let's talk about the biggest issue. I would say that's r literally a deal breaker for me. I guess they might've not been paying attention when they're making this head unit and actually thinking about M car. So if you don't have an M car, your car doesn't have an actual M button, this won't be an issue for you, but if you, your car does have an M button and an M mode, um, when you do press the M mode, the whole system resets and goes back to the original iDrive. It cuts off your music and everything. So when you do want to get that little bit of extra power, your music and everything, because I think they go all the way back, press the on menu button again, go back, it's stuck in the main menu, pauses all your music, and you have to go all the way back to the Apple CarPlay app or Android Auto, depending on what you're using. So for me, that is almost a deal breaker for me because I hate when I'm sitting there driving through traffic and you know, I might want a little bit extra power, press the M button, all my music, the whole system cuts off and everything resets. That is pretty much a deal breaker for me right there. Um, I have also noticed some issues where the audio might skip once in a while. I'm not really sure what that has to deal with, but specifically that M button issue, it's probably one of the biggest issues I've had with this head unit. Um, besides that though, everything is pretty much flawless, even down to, um, I can actually use the menu switcher down here and it works perfectly fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely check out my other videos I have on the channel. I have videos of the um, M3 getting drifted at the track, um, regular tracking it. I have videos on how to install a similar Apple CarPlay system into a non iDrive E90X. Many different videos. Definitely check those out. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you really care, hit the subscribe button. Peace, guys.